Now, 2 Timothy 1, 9 says this, who has saved us? That's talking about Jesus, who has saved us, past, done, and called us with a holy calling, past and done. Not according to our own works. So again, being saved and being called is nothing to do with us, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. So everything necessary, grace being the divine enabling power of God, everything necessary for our salvation, for our calling, our holy calling, is nothing to do with our works, but was granted from eternity. Already a done deal. But now has been revealed so we can see it by the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. And this is why every eye and every ear and every tongue and every knee will bow and all that stuff, because every eye can see him because he has appeared. And what did he do at his appearing? And we're talking about him coming into the world. God with us, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, that is true good news. That he has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, for us to embrace that and to experience that, we've already been granted that grace before everything even started from all eternity so that we would be able to come into this immortality that that truth that light would be revealed and we could see it and embrace it and experience it in the mirror bible it says this from 2 timothy 1 9 he rescued the integrity of our original design and revealed that we have always been his own from the beginning even before time was, we were always his own. We were only lost from our own perspective. God didn't lose us. God isn't careless. God didn't lose things. We chose all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all walked our own way. We've walked away from him. Therefore, we're lost. Not he's lost us. This has nothing to do with anything we did to qualify or disqualify ourselves. We're not talking religious good works or karma here. Jesus unveils grace to be the eternal intent of God. Grace celebrates our pre-creation innocence and now declares our redeemed union with God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, restored innocence. We've been brought back to what we were in God from the beginning. We've been declared the righteousness of God in Christ. Not because of we've done anything, but because he chose to make us the righteousness of God in Christ. In reality, that's how he's always seen us. But we've lost sight of what he has seen us as. And we have seen ourselves through the filter of our own life experience and works. Most people, sadly, don't know this truth. So they don't know what Jesus has already done and what is already theirs. They haven't yet seen it. Their eyes have not yet seen it. Therefore, they've not desired it. Verse 10, everything that grace pointed to is now realized in Jesus Christ and brought into clear view through the gospel. And this is why we have to present a gospel which will reveal the truth of who God really is and what Jesus has really done. And presenting God as some cosmic child abuser who's going to kill his own son is not bringing into clear view what Jesus has done and what God has done in Christ in reconciling the world to himself, not holding anything against them. Jesus is what grace reveals. He took death out of the equation and he redefines life this is good news indeed. And I would absolutely 100% categorically, fundamentally agree with everything that says. Death is taken out of the equation and he has redefined what life really is. And that redefined life is immortality. That is the good news. That is what needs to be brought into clear view. And even for those who have 
had a view of Jesus and have had a relationship with Jesus, the reality of immortality has been obscured and hidden under the covering of death and an acceptance of death as inevitable. Jesus has abolished death. And with death, what it implies, the results or wages of sin, lost identity and evil, which is our lost identity, that has been abolished. Death is abolished. So it's a contradiction for death and punishment to be maintained forever because death has been abolished. And that is why we need to be free from this whole deception of what death is and our embracing of it.